I think you're probably aware of Wago connectors. They've been around for a while and they do them in a few different styles. And the idea of this particular one is that you can lift the little uh, latch up and you can stuff a wire in. And then when you put the latch back down, it traps the wire. And in these case, uh, well, as in the case of most connectors we've come across with Wego, it just commons them all together. It's for bunching connectors into one circuit. And it's one common piece of metal along the back with spring mechanisms in it that latches the wire. They also do a low-profile version like this that uh, has a little flap that goes up and does the same thing. It's got the little uh, metal channel at the back that traps the wire and grips it and makes the electrical connection commons along the whole lot. But I was aware that Wago have had the you know their design ripped off. The originals, I mean, I say the the originals have Wago printed on them. You can see Wago printed in the back. Let's get down a wee bit here just so we can see this better. But the originals have Wago printed in the back. But there's no saying, of course, that the Chinese aren't going to end up putting counterfeit logos on. And they've copied both these types to the best of my knowledge. And the other one I came across recently is this one that's been appearing. And this is odd. Do Wago even do one of these? I mean, this is a clone. It's very clearly a clone. But have, have they actually copied a product of Wago or have they actually evolved the product range? Because this one, unlike the commoning ones, let's see if I can even get continuity through the... This one, let's uh, poke my probes in and just prove that they're all common from one end to the other. And uh, another feature of the Wago here is that they've also got a little terminal here that you can poke a probe down to actually test, which this one notably doesn't. Uh, this one here has that terminal, but it's at the back, I think. Yep, so you can poke test leads into these. However, this one does not common all the wires together. This one just loops through from terminal one to terminal one, not connected to others. Terminal two goes to terminal two, and likewise terminal three goes to terminal three, and ultimately it's it's ideal for a little junction box where you want a flex with three cores to actually loop through this and out the other side, but, well I was going to say, but put in a junction box of course, but then again, given the original market for this, I'd guess that maybe that might not happen. I could see these above you know, ceilings and just the sort of wires on either side. Let's get the spudger and try and open this and see what it looks like inside. I'm kind of intrigued to see what separation there is. I wonder if the reason that Wago haven't done something like this is because of separation issues, actually getting the distance between them. So let's see if this comes apart easily. It's probably so tightly moulded that I may not have any joy here. I may have to pause momentarily while I try and get this open. But let's give it a go. Let's try not to stab myself in the process. Oh, this is very tight. Right, tell you what, rather than torture with me bleeding everywhere, I shall pause momentarily while I try to burst this open. That was absolutely terrible to get to bits. That was so hard. It's very much a one-way trip. The thing is knickered. But it's very interesting inside. When you look at the each contact, the contacts just drop out like this once it's opened. And I didn't realise the way this worked. The spring itself isn't, I mean, as technically speaking, it's part of the contact, but what it's doing here is the cable gets inserted here, underneath that, and then when you pull that little lever up to open that, the reason it's so stiff, and they really are stiff, is because it applies massive amounts of force onto the spring to push it down. And when it pushes it down, that then opens a channel in here that then the wire can get fed right through there. And when you release it, it clamps it really tightly against this connector here, which then connects, connects all the way through to the other wires. It's very good. The only slight weakness in this design is that the connections are close together in there. There is just this little channel um, separating them now. I could actually, I could, we could go up to full-on Trumpy vision, but before I do that, tell you what, I'll bring in the listing and show you what the listing shows. So, a uh, question for you guys. Is this a standard Wago product? Or, I, I, I know this is a clone, but is it something that Wago actually do, or is this 
a clone that has evolved into a really, really useful connector. So this was 10 pieces, 3 pin universe combat wire wiring, connector conductor terminal block, came from CGL3478. It was £4.65 for 10, which almost seems expensive by Chinese product standards, but this does seem quite good quality. Now, um, John Ward, hello, JW here, uh, did some tests on these. He got some of the originals, and he, I think he got some of the originals and put them in series with some of the copies and then just gave them a real good grilling. And it, they both sort of failed around about the same current threshold when it was actually causing the sort of contact point in there. The current was at the point that it was actually causing a hot spot and melting the plastic. But it was way above the rating of the connector. It doesn't tell you a long-term thing because you do have that thing that you've got a conductor in here pressed against this unknown metal, which does have steel as a component to it. It may be some sort of stainless steel variant. And you don't know how that's going to be over time, the connection between two metals that some sort of oxide layer or, or reactive layer may actually form between those. So I kind of, I would always recommend that, you know, if you want to use Wago terminals, they're not that expensive to get the original thing. Try and get them in packets from a local supplier, preferably a local electrical supplier or like, I think Screwfix sells them in the UK. Maybe Tool Station too, not sure. But, um, they're readily available, and what you're getting is one that's been properly, fully tested and all that. These ones, I'm not sure. I mean, they look sound enough, but you, you just never know. That That is that one variable, that this lack of trust in copied products, that they might not have quite copied the engineering perfectly, if you remember the huge capacitor fiasco. <clears throat> so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to introduce Trumpy Vision here. Let's uh, bring Trumpy Brick in and take a closer look at the terminal, which is absolutely so powerfully springy. Let's zoom down on this and see if I can focus on that. Is it, did that focus on that? I think it did. So this spring here is just immensely springy. With it out of the housing and not being able to push down on it in the housing, it was really hard to push that down enough to actually get that wire in. It really is incredibly springy. Really, really tense. Yeah. Uh, I also don't know what stops the wire poking right through. So, for instance, uh, if I had a thinnish wire, can I poke it in too far? Um, hold on, let's get let's get a bit of wire that's not stripped, but hey. Ooh, I recognise this. I wonder what that experiment that was involving. Let's crop the end off and just uh, try, just out of interest. Uh, I'm not going to do this now. I'm going to have to go and get another connector. One moment, please. So what I was wondering there was, if both of these are up, can I just poke a wire right through? And the answer is, no, it does seem to find some sort of limit. I'm not sure what that limit is. I'm not sure what stops that going further. Um, I'm not sure what stops that. Uh, where's one of the terminals there? No, I don't really know what actually stops that going all the way through, but something does kind of stop it. That's strange. Uh, that works. So, applications for these. Oh, one other thing. The one niggle I had is because the closest to the terminals, there is that slight distance there. It's not a great thing. It does have a barrier between it that, technically speaking, if they get wet, which is, you know, water's not going to be a great thing anyway, it could cause tracking over. If the middle terminal is earth, live and neutral, either side, then it's going to cause an RCD to trip. You know, it's nothing major. It's, it's, a, it's a petty niggle. I don't think it's actually a major issue. Let's uh, focus down onto the, the bench again. So what application could I see for those? Well, the first one that came to mind was these uh, hydroponic lights with the little stub of flex coming out. It would be kind of perfect for just joining through if you didn't have proper plugs and connectors, if you wanted to add on to flex onto these because they do come with such a tiny flex. And you know, it's just a really handy way of joining a flex, maybe in an enclosure or something like that. So it's strange. Um, it's actually a really neat idea. I'm just, now I'm, I'm going to have to investigate. I'm going to have to find, do Wago actually do an official version of these? Or is this just a rogue knockoff that's evolved to the point that's actually improved the range? But very neat. Quite a functional little connector, actually quite useful. 
a little bit extra to add to this video that suddenly made me think, hmm, not bad. Watch this. I'm going to zoom in a bit, right? Big magnet, stainless steel springs stuck to the magnet. The back contact not sticking to the magnet because the back contact is tinned copper. So, actually looking like a fairly convincing copy after all. That is beginning to make me think they could actually do a decent job. The other thing I noticed when I opened this up is the reason that you can't push the wire in too far is because it stops physically. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom in again here. Actually, you know what? Let's bring the, let's bring the picture in again. That's the best bit. The reason uh, the thing won't go in too far, the wire, is because it hits against the back here because this is tapering down to the base of the actual carrier here. And this has been slightly mutilated with me trying to actually bend it a bit. But when the wire goes in, it physically stops against this area and then gets gripped up against the copper, tinned copper plate by the steel spring. That is pretty impressive. It also makes me quite impressed at the Wego terminals if they are using the same technique. So there you go. It's really not too bad at all. It's quite an impressive little connector.